Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday. Sorry, this is a self-promotion video. I apologize, I hate doing it, but I just launched a course. It's called Next Level Next.js and I actually am very proud of it. So I wanted to take a few minutes to just show it to my audience, talk about what we're gonna build in this course, what sort of technologies um, we're going to cover and services we're going to use so that if it's something interesting to you, check it out. So this is the app we're going to be building. It's called Home Sweet Home, and I got the idea from looking at the Airbnb website, where they basically have a map on the right, and as you zoom in and move the map around, the houses that show up on the left change. So basically they're just showing you the houses that are in your viewport. So if I zoom in to, to say these two houses here, you're only seeing the two over there. If I zoom out, it's gonna show me all the houses. So some of the technologies we use on this page, for example, we're using GraphQL for the API between the front end and the back end. So on the front end, we use Apollo client. On the back end, we use Apollo server. But alongside Apollo server, we use something called type GraphQL. And this is where we can um, declare all of our mutations, queries, uh, the data types being returned, and do it all using TypeScript, which is pretty cool and pretty fun to work, out, work with. And if you haven't worked with any of these technologies before, don't worry, that's sort of the point. Uh, I actually learned a lot on the, in the process as well, so I tried not to skip anything. And we're gonna go from basically a blank slate, white application, um, you're looking at a blank page to what you see here, deployed to Vercel. So also on this page, we have Mapbox. A lot of my videos and, and content I've done uses maps. This is no different. So we've used React Map GL from the folks at Uber, which is really easy to integrate with Mapbox. We're also using Google Places, so you can search uh, Kingston, Ontario, and the map will fly you over to that location. I don't have any homes in Kingston right now, so we'll pop back to Toronto. Um, where's our data coming from? It's coming from a Postgres database that we are using Prisma for. So Prisma is a really cool ORM that lets you query your data from Postgres, MySQL, etc. So we're going to use this in combination with Type GraphQL to power this whole thing that you're seeing. So one cool thing is that we actually build a couple custom hooks in this course, because if you see, I move the map around, let me maybe zoom in on this one. If I were to refresh the page, the map's still in the same location. So we build a custom hook to do that. And we also build a custom hook that stops sort of this flashing that, that shows every time you move the map and it's requerying the data. So you're gonna learn a lot about hooks in this course. We also added authentication. So let me actually just log out for a sec. And if I were to go to uh, houses add and I'm not logged in, it should redirect me to the auth page. So we use some of the functionality built into Next.js like uh, get server side props to detect whether the user's authenticated. And for authentication, we went with um, Firebase auth. So much like any real application, you're going to integrate with a lot of services to make it, uh, to make it happen. This is no different. Firebase is pretty easy to, to use. And I'm just going to authenticate. So as soon as I'm in here, the nav changes and it lets me go and add the house. So this is the add house form. And for the form we used over here, React hook form, which is a really nice, um, as the name implies, hook based form with validation and stuff like that. So we're gonna, we're gonna add a home here and we'll just say that it's 500 Young Street, Toronto. As Soon as I choose the location, it's gonna pop open the rest of the form. So here I'm gonna add an image. And I'm going to go to my desktop, houses, this one right here. So this is a tree house, or no, not a tree house, a bird house. And um, we used sort of instant preview on the screen. So we're gonna cover how you do that. But we post this image on Cloudinary. So we're going to cover how you can upload this image to Cloudinary using um, React and mutations to make sure that it's secure only for authenticated users. So we'll just say this is a one bed bird house. Save that. And right now in this process, it's uploading a big, big image to Cloudinary, doing the mutation. And when it's done, it redirects me back to this page 
where it shows me the house that I just added on the map. So this is the detail page that we're going to be building. It shows you your house and then we built a separate query to find nearby homes. So homes within 15 kilometers of the one we're looking at. And I don't know if you noticed, but it took a sec for this image to load. And that's because Cloudinary is doing sort of on the fly, on demand image resizing. So we're going to cover how to integrate that into a React application. And we've got up atop here, the ability to edit. So we can increase this to two beds, save that. And it's uh, instantly updated and also the ability to delete. So we work a lot with permissions. You have to be the owner of this house in order to edit it or to delete it. And we handle permissions on the back end inside of our GraphQL API, but also on the front end. So this is the app. It's not too big, but it packs a lot into it. Um, just to go over some of the technologies, we use Firebase for authentication. We use Apollo for both the Apollo client and Apollo server. GraphQL API, type GraphQL to define the actual queries and mutations and field, Prisma for getting the data out of our database, Cloudinary to on the fly um, resize our images and host them. We end up deploying this in one of the last videos to Vercel. We use Mapbox to, to show a couple different maps on the screen. All of the styling we do is done in Tailwind. I'm not uh, a huge front-end developer despite doing all my videos about React. I, I prefer to be on the back end and think about the logic and stuff like that. So we tried to stay out of the weeds with CSS and we use Tailwind to be able to do that. Obviously this whole thing is built on Next.js and we use React hook form. So please check this out. You don't have to be some expert developer, I would say anyone who's worked with React a little bit and they want to see what it takes to build a, a full stack application. So front end, back end, not skipping anything, using all of the technologies um, that I just mentioned. Another thing I, I didn't mention is as you hover the houses on the left, it's, it's updating state and it's synchronizing the map with what you're hovering so that you know which house your, you've got your mouse over and we'll just go view our our birdhouse again. There we go. Cool. So please check it out. Um, I realize that a lot of folks are from places in the world where the cost of this course, which is 50 bucks, may be a little bit out of reach. So just hit me up on, on Twitter or inside of the, the platform I'm using to sell it. There's a little message thing here. Uh, just let me know where you're from and I'll give you a coupon code to make this affordable for you. Um, yeah, please check it out. I'd love to hear your feedback for, for the hundreds of people that are already taking this course and I'll talk to you soon. Later this week, I should have more tutorials coming out where we're going to talk a little bit more about Firebase Auth and also Firebase Database and how to integrate that with React. So stay tuned for that later this week. Thanks everyone, take care, bye.